The Soul Redeemer, Book 2, Chapter 8, The Inn. The following week, Jake and Nicole stood outside the inn and prayed, Lord, what do you want us to do about this place? When no answer came, they asked that the Father would send his angel of provision to open up the doors of opportunity for the inn, and then they drove back to the ranch. The next morning, Nicole kept thinking about the children of Israel. God said that he had given them the promised land, and even after the walls of Jericho fell, they didn't just sit outside waiting for a miracle. They still had to go in and forcefully take the land. On a whim, Nicole called Annie. Hey girl, I'm going to ask you to do a really crazy thing, she explained when Annie answered. Annie laughed. Of course you are. I wouldn't expect anything less. Nicole nervously giggled. Will you put in an offer on the inn for me? I know it sounds ridiculous, but I have $1,000. The two seconds of silence seemed like forever. The nanny said, got it. I'll write it up and submit it today. Is that all? You aren't going to tell me that's impossible? Nothing is impossible with God, remember? Nicole was almost in tears. Thanks for the reminder, Annie. I'm also going to email you a letter to go with the offer, explaining our vision for the inn and why we would like to have it. Sounds good, Annie replied. As they hung up, Nicole prayed, Lord Jesus, your kingdom come. Your will be done. When Jake got home from work, Nicole hesitantly told him what she had done. He just shook his head and smiled. She wasn't sure if it was a good smile or an irritated smile. But either way, he didn't say anything negative. Jake opened his email and saw a note from Frederick, a friend and successful businessman who lived several hours away. There was an attachment about the foreclosure of the Samaritan Inn. Jake read the note to Nicole. You were probably already aware of the foreclosure on the inn. When I saw it, I remembered the time that the four of us had lunch there. It was an interesting place. We can only hope that someone will buy it and that it will be even better than before. Jake hit reply and responded, Thanks for the heads up. We are aware and in fact have been praying about it. Nicole and her friends believe that the Lord's going to give it to them. They have plans for making it into a ministry center, so we'll see what the Lord does. It's all up to him. Two days later, Frederick called and asked if they could meet him and his wife Judy for lunch in Samaria. They met that afternoon at the cafe. After catching up with each other's lives, Frederick said, I want to hear your thoughts on the inn. So Nicole shared her heart and the things that the intercessors had been praying about. And she told them about her offer. Frederick laughed and patted her hand. That's what I love about you, Nicole. You are bold. I don't know about that, she said, but if we're going to have the inn, it needs to be a supernatural mission right from the beginning, she replied. Frederick turned to Jake. How do you feel about it? Do you share the same vision for the inn? Jake smiled. Well, I don't have the intensity of faith for it that Nicole does. It would have to be a miracle for it to work out, and I haven't given it much consideration, really. But let's say that Nicole's offer is accepted. Then what? We don't have the money to start a business. As far as her vision for it, I guess, I'm in support of it. Frederick asked, If you had the money, Jake, would you be willing to run it? I'd like to say yes, he thought, but all I can say is that I'm willing to take this a step at a time. I'll be honest with you. I can maintain a building, do repairs and such, but I have no experience running a business and don't have a clue how to go about it. Nicole spoke up. I agree with Jake that we have no experience and even the time commitment for this project could be overwhelming. However, if God gives this to us, it is not our personal property, it's God's. The vision the intercessors and I have for it is much more than one person or family job. There are others who would have to step in and function with the gifts they have, and I believe they're ready to do that. It would take some organizing, but the point is, this would be God's in, his business, and he would show us step by step what we need to do. I would not consider purchasing it for any other reason. Judy nudged Frederick. He took a swig of coffee and said, 
Several weeks ago, I started thinking about the inn. All I can figure is that it was God because I couldn't seem to get it out of my mind. I've only been there once with you guys, but it kept coming to my mind um, to the point that it was distracting. I had no idea it was for sale. And then I just happened to see the foreclosure notice. Judy and I started praying about it, and when I read your email, I knew we needed to meet up with you guys. Frederick paused and looked at Judy. She smiled and nodded for him to continue. Okay, so we're talking speculation here. Frederick shifted his weight on his chair in anticipation. I get your need to know that this is a supernatural gift so that you're sure it's God's direction, but let's say that your offer is accepted. We would like to be your financial covering until you're able to get established. We could provide the finances to get it established and a, ma and, and a manager to run the business end for as long as you would want them to run it. They could train you or one of your other people so that you could take it over when you're ready. Judy added, we want you to understand that there would be no strings attached. We feel as you do, that God wants this in. He has given you a vision for it, and so we're willing to do whatever we can to help God's plan for in and for Samaria. She looked at her husband, then with a funny half-smile on her face, said to Jake and Nicole, In speculation, of course. Nicole just sat there, speechless and smiling. Jake's eyes were glazed over as he tried to take it all in. Frederick reached across the table and touched his shoulder. You okay, buddy? Jake shook his head as if waking up from a dream. I don't know. I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything, Frederick laughed. Let's go home and pray and see what God will do. The next morning, Annie called Nicole with miraculous news that her offer had been accepted. After an incredibly fast escrow, the Samaritan Inn had new owners. Blaze would be the spiritual covering and Frederick the financial backing. The first order of business was to spiritually cleanse every inch of the, that building and property, and the second was to erect a new sign in place of the old. It now read, The Holy Ghost Lives Here. Frederick and Judy hired Zeke as business manager, and they began working toward getting the coffee and juice bar up and running first, with the opening of the inn right behind. The large room upstairs was set up as a worship center with a stage area awaiting instruments. They set out comfortable furniture, tables, and lamps to make it a place where people could come and relax in the presence of God. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider, had just moved into the heart of Samaria, right where he longed to be. As the inn was turned over to Blaze, there was an explosion in the spiritual realm that was hurling I.S. away from Samaria, and he was spinning out of control. He was being thrust from his throne in the heavenlies above Samaria. I.S. had done everything in his power to stop the sale, but to no avail. When he finally came to a stop, he took stock of his situation. He was on the outskirts of Samaria, and there was a huge portal between the earth and God's domain over the inn. He had lost his rights to control the heart of Samaria. I.S. sat licking his wounds for several minutes and then began to formulate his plans. He never gave up. He was a relentless soul hunter, and there were plenty of people he could still manipulate and control within Samaria. He would work on taking back the ground he had lost. He just needed to find the back door. In fact, that back door was just across the street. He may have lost his throne, but his next thoughts comforted him and stroked his damaged pride. He would set up shop in the Banning Building, a perfect place to begin staging a kidnapping murder and oh so much more. Yes!